Hey, what's up guys? Bitcoin continues to drop, but do not be fooled, BTC will make a lot of people very rich. In this video, we'll take a look at the Bitcoin market, top news, then venture capitalist Peter Thiel will explain how BTC will make 100x over time. Guys, inflation skyrocketed recently. Current banking system will not help, as top high yield saving accounts offer no more than 0.5% APY. This is why I partnered with BlockFi. BlockFi is a crypto platform that lets you leverage your crypto and put it to fair use. Here you can earn high yield, trade different crypto assets, borrow cash and more. This is like all in one crypto bank. This platform has highly secure BlockFi wallet where you can store your crypto with no minimum balance. Now you do not have to sell your crypto and pay high taxes. At BlockFi, you can borrow money at rates as low as 4.5% APR and use the crypto as a collateral. BlockFi is the first company to launch Bitcoin Reward Credit Card. It is a credit card where you can earn up to 3.5% on every purchase with no annual fees. Sign up today and earn up to $250 bonus when you open an account with the link blockfi.com slash aimstone in the description box below. Disclaimer, the interest accounts are intended only for non-US persons. Let's start with the Bitcoin price action. Yet another dip, now BTC is trading below $41,000. The good news is it continues to trade within this positive momentum channel. If Bitcoin touches the floor of this support line, then it will drop to below 40 k It seems like it can be the case in the next few days. Then if the support sustains, we should see another bounce back. The resistance at this time would be around $50,000. This channel already has 4 months of momentum. It kinda reminds me where BTC was in the summer of 2020. There was at least 4 months of the sideways fluctuations within the channel between $10,000 and $13,000. And out of the sudden it skyrocketed in October, in which case it made additional 6x. Of course, at this point we do not know in which direction Bitcoin is going to break out, upwards or downwards. On my opinion, the downside is very limited as BTC did not make as much gains compared to the last cycles. In the first cycle, after the first Bitcoin having BTC gained 100x, after second BTC having BTC made 33x, and after third Bitcoin having it made only 10x to an all time high of $69,000 that took place last year. After the first and second cycle, we saw a significant correction of more than 80%. This time we might not see that is because, as I said before, BTC is nowhere near where it should have been. You can think of it as submerging the basketball under the water. The deeper the submerge, the higher the basketball will jump out. On contrast, the smaller the submerge, the smaller the jump. In this cycle, we had the small submerge, therefore the downside seems to be very limited. Today, Bitcoin fake rate index is at 32, which is in fear. Last week it was neutral at 54. This is when BTC was in high $47,000. When BTC is on a discount, I'm preparing to stack more sets. As I said, I'm not going to buy it 47k, but now temptation increases. Well, somebody has to buy Bitcoin discount to create market. Here we have Terra Luna Foundation scoops up 4,130 Bitcoin worth of $176 million. That's what I'm talking about. Four days ago, on April 6th, LFG acquired 5,040 Bitcoin, which pushed the stashed up to 35,777.98 Bitcoin. Today, on April 10, which was yesterday, LFG obtained another large amount of BTC as it deposited 4,130 Bitcoin worth of $176.1 million into LFG Bitcoin wallet. The first transaction was 1,482 BTC, the second one was 492 BTC, the third transfer was 1,174.99 BTC, and final transaction sent to LFG wallet was 981 BTC. After depositing 4,130 Bitcoin, the LFG Bitcoin wallet now holds 39,897.98 BTC, worth $1.7 billion using today's BTC exchange rates. Almost 40,000 BTC, that's a huge amount of Bitcoin. They are planning to acquire $10 billion worth of Bitcoin as a reserve over time. 
it seems like it will surpass MicroStrategy Holding, which by the way a few days ago bought an additional $191 million worth of Bitcoin that amounts to the current total of almost 130k BTC. People that understand money desperate for more Bitcoin. Another great piece of news. Tesla, Block and Blockstream team up to mine Bitcoin of solar power in Texas. Miami, Blockstream and Jack Dorsey Block, formerly known as Square, are breaking ground on the solar and battery power Bitcoin mining in Texas that uses solar and storage technology from Tesla. Tesla's 3.8 MW solar PV array and 12 MW hours mega pack will power the facility. Blockstream co-founder and CEO Adam Beck, a British cryptographer and a member of Cypherpark crew, told CNBC on the sideline of Bitcoin 2022 conference in Miami that mining facility is designed to be proof of concept of 100% renewable energy Bitcoin mining at scale. Bitcoin is indeed becomes more and more renewable. I do not want to hear any arguments that Bitcoin is terrible for the environment. Driving billions of combustion engine cars at the same time around the world is bad for environment. Kevin O'Leary tweeted recently that Bitcoin will become world reserve currency of Earth. I think it's very likely in few decades. Maybe there will be multiple world reserve money, including gold. Time will show, we'll just have to wait. Here is a very cool chart that represents who continues to stack sets. The blue line represents the supply held by entities in between 1 to 10 BTC. If you own it between 1 to 10 Bitcoin, you are officially a crap. This would be not a small amount of money. In the current valuation, that would be in between $40,000 and $400,000. Number of Bitcoins that craps hold continues to go up, and now it reached new all-time high. All craps combined now hold roughly 1.7 million BTC, which would be at almost 9% of all BTC in circulation. The red line represents number of entities that hold in between 10 and 100 BTC. If you hold in between 10 and 100 Bitcoin, you are officially a fish. At this current rate, that would be around 404 million dollars. The number of BTC held by fish continues to go up as well, but in this lower rate compared to crabs. Fish now hold roughly 3.1 million BTC. That would be around 16% of all BTC in circulation. Then, we have this green line that represents a number of Bitcoin held by entities in between 100 and 1000 Bitcoin. These guys are whales, at this current exchange rate that would be between 4 million and 40 million dollars. Unlike crabs and fish that increase much faster, whales still creeping up higher. These whales roughly hold 3.8 million BTC, which would be around 20% of all Bitcoin circulation. We clearly see the smaller guys stacking sets in faster rate compared to whales. Bitcoin is people's money. Here is another interesting chart. This chart represents Bitcoin mint transaction fees. Currently, the mint transaction is around $1.30. At the peak of 2017 bull market, it was over 100 bucks. Transaction fees drastically drop in the bear market and consolidation phase. This is because people lose interest in transacting with Bitcoin. But at the same time, this is a great indication that signaling that bull market is just around the corner. 2015-2016 was that period of time of low transaction fees. Soon after that, BTC skyrocketed. The same happened in 2020, and it's happening right now. So keep an eye on the market spike and the higher transaction fees. Now let's take a look at this quick video from venture capitalist Peter Thiel, who explains how BTC will make 10x and 100x over time and what's happening at this current moment. Let's take a look. If we look at the current market caps, 830 billion versus 386 billion of Ethereum, but if we if we map Bitcoin onto gold and Ethereum onto Visa. Um, well, Ethereum's worth roughly as much as Visa, so it's fairly valued. You know, if, if you have a, a seamless, frictionless payment system, you know, it's worth $400 billion. As it works, the gas fees have to go down. It has to become completely frictionless to work. Um, and then, whereas gold is, um, is 12 trillion, and if, if Bitcoin is going to replace gold, the question is really, why is it so undervalued? What is it going to take for it to go up uh, to uh, the 10x? And I'm going to close on, that, close on that a little bit later. Um, um, we can, um, uh, yeah, so there's the sort of are all, um, all these different ways Bitcoin is going to um, 
has every potential to replace gold. Question is uh, why, it has, why it has not done so yet. Um, now, I think there's, if we take a, a, one step further back, we can even ask a question, why is, you know, why is gold worth $12 trillion? How much, how much should all the gold in the world be worth? And, um, and if we look at, say, the 1970s, um, gold did remarkably well. Um, and uh, you know, stocks were, were kind of a crappy investment. And, um, and it's sort of very different from today. So if you look at all the gold in the world today versus all the publicly traded equities in the world today, it's about 12 trillion of gold, 115 trillion of equities, roughly a 10 to 1 ratio. If you look at sort of the peak of, um, of, the, of, the, of the bull market in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, where gold peaked at about $850 an ounce in nominal dollars, at the time, all the gold in the world was worth about two and a half trillion. All the publicly traded equities were worth two and a half trillion, and the ratio was actually one to one. And so, one of the questions you have to ask is, uh, yeah, why, why is the ratio um, ten to one? Why can't it be one to one? Maybe it should be a hundred to one. It can be all over the map. What what defines these kinds of ratios? And I would say the, I would say sort of one one simple version. Is, um, is that uh, in the 1970s, you know, cash was trash, bonds were trash, but equities were pretty bad investments as well because in an inflationary world, um, in a high regulation, high inflation, high tax world, um, the effective capital gains tax rate goes well north of 100% because you don't set the basis uh, on, on equities, you don't adjust it to inflation, and so, uh, equities become an extraordinarily bad investment. In the world of the 2010s, you know, gold did pretty well, Bitcoin did extremely well, but the real competitor uh, for, you know, Bitcoin is not Ethereum, that's a payment system. It's not, you know, it's not even gold. It's, it's something like the S&P 500, it's the stock market as a whole. And this is the way, you know, this is the way Bitcoin trades every day. You know, if the stocks go up, Bitcoin goes up, now it's, it's, it's like a highly levered NASDAQ stock on a day-to-day -day basis. And, the, and that is sort of, in a sense, the real competitor. And the question is um, whether we're headed towards a kind of 1970s style world where it's higher inflation, more regulation, um, and, um, and even being, you, know, you don't want to be in a stock or bond, but even being, sorry, you don't want to be in cash or bond, but even being in a stock, you're effectively um, in something that's like a government-linked entity. Companies, woke companies, are sort of quasi-controlled by the government in a way that Bitcoin never will be. And, uh, and in that sort of a world, um, I, I would submit that perhaps the, the way we should think of the Bitcoin to equity ratio, you know, the, the benchmark for Bitcoin is not gold, but equities. And the question is, why can't there be parity between Bitcoin and equities? Why, why shouldn't we be talking about something more like 100 to 1? Which, of course, won't, won't, be, won't be as good as it sounds because um, the fiat money will be worth a lot less and it'll be taxed pretty heavily and, and whatnot. But I think, um, but I'm, I'm still hopeful that if uh, Bitcoin goes up by a factor of 100, you will, uh, you'll make um, some money, a modest amount of money in, uh, in real terms. But let me, um, let me ask, let me, uh, let me come back to this question. Um, why, why has Bitcoin not... Uh, yet gone to 100,000 to a million dollars of Bitcoin. Why has it not yet converged with gold or, um, or even with the equity markets more broadly? And what, what, is, what is going to, you know, what is, what is it going to take for this, for this to happen? And, uh, you know, I, I know that sort of the ways we often talk about um, businesses or technologies is, you know, how, how great the technology is, how great the code is, how great the math is, uh, you know, how, 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 how it's sort of innovative. But I, I want to sort of suggest that we should maybe think of, we should think of, um, we, we should think of it at least in one dimension as sort of a political question. And it's a, it's a movement and it's a political question whether this movement is going to um, succeed or whether, um, whether the enemies of the movement are going to succeed in stopping us. And, uh, and so I want to maybe end with um, you know, an enemies list, a list of people who I think are stopping Bitcoin. And uh, you know, they're, they're, they all have, many of them have, there's sort of a lot, lot of them, they tend to have the sort of nameless, faceless, bureaucrat perspective, which is of course one of the ways they hide. 
um, but I'm gonna, we're going to try to try to expose them and uh, and and realize that uh, that this is sort of what we have to fight for uh, for Bitcoin to go 10x or 100x from here. So, um, enemy number one. I, I, I think he's sort of. Um, I, I, I think the sort of the, the sociopathic uh, grandpa from Omaha is um, is um, you know, uh, is, is perhaps the most honest and the most direct in it. Um, and, um, and you have to sort of think of, it's, it's, it's of course, on some level, these people are always just talking their book. It's sort of, they have some sort of institutional bias. Uh, it's long, you know, a list of woke companies. It's, 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 it's somehow long, this, um, this uh, fiat money system. And, um, and of course, um, if, the, if it was, if it, if the, you know, there's always a sense if you're, a, if you're a money manager, you want to pretend that it's complicated to invest. And uh, if, if, if all you have to do is buy Bitcoin, you know, that's, that's, like, that's like ridiculous. All these people are out of business. I like how Peter Thiel thinks. He's not comparing Bitcoin to gold only. He said Bitcoin is more like index funds such as S&P 500. But Bitcoin will capture a good chunk of any market in the world. Currently, guys like Warren Buffett and Jamie Dimon politically bias against Bitcoin that keep it away for 100k and even a million dollar. But over time, Bitcoin will get there as we will witness a generational shift. Let me know what you guys think. Is guys like Warren Buffett is the reason why BTC is not at 6 figures yet? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.